Welcome to All About Artists, and my name is Susan Rose, and we have a special guest tonight, an extremely talented artist from Manchester, United Kingdom. Her name is Barbara Holm. Barbara is a disabled artist on a mission to empower disabled people, etc. She painted personal sensitive portraits of them in watercolor, giving people with disabilities a voice. Welcome to the show, Barbara. Hi, Susan. Thank you for having me. First, before we start, I want to thank Dave Fabiano, Joanne Holbert, and Nicole Brown for having a show. Otherwise, there'd be no show without them. Thank you so much. Barbara, what or who inspired you to become an artist that paints disabled people? Um, I, I've always been a portrait painter, or, or since the 90s, probably always been a portrait painter. But I actually specialised in disabled people when a woman called Letitia de Guesh got in touch with me who'd had breast cancer and she had a scar on her breast and she asked if I could paint her um, from some of the photographs that she showed me because she felt like it would be empowering and help her to accept a new body. So um, I said yes that I would do that so we did a painting of her and she loved it and then um, I decided that I could also paint myself because I had scars as well from having cancer and see um, how that felt for me as well and did some self-portraits and found that empowering and from there went on to paint more people with scars, more women with scars and then um, decided to expand it to all disabled people um, uh, that I could apply it to all disabled people so put out a call out for disabled people who might be interested in having the portraits painted and sharing their stories. Barbara, what was your art education after school? Um, after school, I think I did, um, I did art A level, but that was at school. And then um, I did an art foundation course when I was in my early 20s, but I was too busy partying and, and I was a bit immature. So I fell out with one of the teachers, so left that. Um, then started doing a art foundation course after I'd been working as a secretary and really enjoyed it and finished that one. And then started doing an HND in illustration and also done um, various life drawing classes and portrait drawing classes and lessons. So I've done a fair amount of studying over the years for different things. Barbara, um, how did your health and disabilities interfere with your pursuit of creating art? Um, it's, it's interfered quite a bit over, over the years um, with various courses that I've done. Like when I was doing my HND in illustration, um, a few people that I, I started it and I was really enjoying it. And then a few people that I know got attacked around my local area and um, it caused me to have agoraphobia. I, started, I was too frightened to go out, so I had to drop that course. So I never finished my HND in illustration, which is a shame because it's a very good course and very interesting. But um, I've had that interfere and also I've had cancer interfere and also mobility Issue, various mobility issues due to my hypermobility syndrome. So um, it's more about getting to places that's been an issue more than anything else, apart from with the cancer when I just couldn't do anything. I basically slept through my chemotherapy. 
it's, it couldn't do anything at all. So, yeah, it's, it's had a big impact on accessibility, really. Barbara, what what were your artistic pursuits when you were bedridden? When I was bedridden, I went through a stage with my joint hypermobility syndrome where my back and hips just would I just couldn't walk um, at all, and my back and hips were really seized up and in a lot was in a lot of pain. So um, I had a look online and I found some um, jewelry making classes on YouTube. So I started off doing beadwork, which I got bored of pretty quickly because it wasn't inventive enough for me, really. So then looked into doing wire work, um, which is great because you can bend the wires and make any shapes you want out of it. And that, I found that quite inventive and um, started making what I would describe as elven influence style jewellery, very much um, influenced by Lord of the Rings the um, Elvin jewellery and that. So that those were all my own designs and really enjoyed doing that while I was doing it. Well, Barbara, what, uh, what about we um, show some of your artwork and tell us about how they affected your artistic journey? And yeah, that'd be great, thank you. This one here. This is a painting of Helen Roten, who is in my Scars and All series. Um, as you can see, she's had an operation on one of her breasts. Um, this is watercolour influenced by Alphonse Moucha um, with the wreath and the colours are um, influenced by one of his moonlit scenes of a woman in, in with um, moonlighting colours on her. And the border, the patterns on the borders are very Musha influenced as well. So that's actually watercolour and gold ink that I've used on that. And that's the one that um, was displayed in Sotheby's. So Helen also um, wrote her own story to go with her painting. And it was her that gave me the idea of people writing their own stories and having their own stories heard in their own words rather than being reinterpreted by a me. I thought it's much more powerful to hear people's stories from, direct from themselves to accompany the portraits. Let's see, let's see what else do we have here? And this is a painting from when I was doing portrait classes um, of a model called Sam. Uh, she was a fa fantastic model. And at this point in time, I wasn't doing realistic skin tones. I was experimenting using colour to represent tone. And um, it was a combination of not being very good at mixing flesh tones <laughs> and, uh, and a bit of experimentation thrown in as well. And Sam was great to paint because she had a very, very um, strong look about her and was very inventive in her hairstyles, etc. So, yeah, and I was at this point as well, was I got very into drawing the hands as well as the face as well. This is actually done in acrylics, which I was painting at this time because I was uh, my mobility wasn't as bad. So I was able to paint larger pictures than I do now. I think this is a two size. Hey, let's see some more here. Let's see if I can drop them. I don't know. And this is, the, is this one is the same person? Yes, that's the same person. That's Sam as well. And that's, that's from my early days. That's acrylic. And um, Sam, as, you, as I said, was great for dressing up and getting into um, wild hairstyles and, and outfits, etc. This this one has been likened to a Frida Kahlo, I think, um, with the flowers in the hair and the flowers and the fact that Sam has strong eyebrows anyway, 
lends itself to that Frida Kahlo look and the fact that her outfit is similar to a wedding outfit. I think Frida Kahlo did a few paintings of herself in wedding outfits. And um, round the edge is a um, cracked CD. I found out that if you put a CD in the microwave, you can get really interesting patterns from it. So that's so the design of this, um, even right back in those early days, is actually influenced by Alphonse Moucher, who where he had women sitting in what was called a queue design, where they were sat in round or oval shape and their bodies cut across the outline of the O or Q to make a Q type, type shape. So some of my influences have gone right through. <laughs> I still have them with me now. And who do we have here? This is um, Abby Mills. Um, Abby is from my Women's Health series. Um, she's a young hip chick looking very cool there. Uh, I love the photograph in this because it had some touches of yellow and pink, um, which I've actually used in the painting as well. So I thought it added a bit more interest to it color wise and from the light reflecting around her. Um, Abby has um, cerebral palsy, um, so she's one of my disabled um, participants, and she's an agent for disabled entertainers. Um, this is done in watercolour, and um, yeah, I just love the pose in this. I think she looks really cool and funky, so I was really pleased with the picture that she provided. Um, before I um, go to the next um, portrait, uh, I was wondering, um, where can people purchase your art? Where can people purchase your art? Oh, people can purchase the buy. People can purchase my art um, at my buy my art at, on my website, which is Barbara Hume fineartist.com and um, also they can contact me on Instagram at barbara.hume and the hume spelt with an L so it's H-U-L-M-E um, and on Facebook my personal page is Barbara Hume and I also have a page um, the Earl's Barbara Hume Fine Art and Jewellery because it was set up when I was still doing the jewellery so they don't let you change the Earl but it's Barbara Hume artists or whatever, so that they can find it there as well. Okay. So yeah, just message me and and sort that out. And who's this lovely lady? Um, this is a painting of Letitia who started um, the whole series off of doing disabled people. Um, Letitia has a scar on her, on her breast, which she's um, showing in the photograph from when she had cancer. It's a watercolour painting, which I've done in um, gentle colours, because I think they suit her skin tone. And it, it, uh, a few people have said that I've likened this one to being similar to a Lucian Freud. Um, this is Again, uh, watercolour painting and much um, much thanks to Letitia for setting me off painting in this direction as it's been very fulfilling. Um, can you tell me, uh, Barbara, how do you price your art? Pricing it, I actually did um, a marketing course with a woman called Paula Telzine and she advised because a lot of artists have difficulty with pricing and she advised to price by the linear measurements rather than area so like a lot of people would charge so much for one piece and then if a piece is twice the size that they'll, they'll charge twice as much and she said that jumps too big so i measured the length and the width 
add them mm -hmm. together and then times them by a unit, mm -hmm. which the unit varies depending as a, if I put the price up or down, the unit will vary, but I, that's how I work it out. So by the linear measurement times the set amount, that's what I've been advised. So I'll go with that. <laughs> um, Barbara, how did cancer change and shape you as far as your artistic journey? Um, I think cancer is a very big thing to be dealing with. It's um, basically mine was uh, esophageal cancer, which can be life threatening. It's not got great survival rates. Um, but I was very fortunate and very lucky with the treatment that I that I got. And I think it gave me a further insight into disabilities. Um, and this man, um... Who is he? Blair Mall, and I love this this painting and the pose and everything. Blair got in touch with me and volunteered to um, be part of my mental health series, where he told his story about the mental health issues he'd been through. Um, he sent me a couple of photographs which weren't really what I was looking for, and then I spotted this on his Instagram page, and I asked him if I could paint him from the photograph of of this before I painted it. And he said, he agreed straight away. And I just love it. I think the composition of it, the quirkiness of it, everything, I totally loved the image. So I was really pleased when he let me use the photograph for reference. And um, that's watercolor as well. He used a few different washes. And um, yeah, that he's been shown at Chalton Arts Festival and um, he he came to the exhibition, saw it himself, so I've got pictures of him with his painting, which is nice. How do you get your volunteers? How do you get your volunteers, uh, what, Barbara? What, what I do for the volunteers is I put up posts on internet, um, on Facebook and Instagram, basically asking for volunteers and saying, you know, I'm looking for disabled people who fit into these categories for mental health, um, men's health, women's health, or scars and all. And um, so I want you to tell your stories as well to go with your images. And um, a, a lot of people are very up for it, especially because I think, especially people who might have disabilities that haven't been medically diagnosed, they feel they've got a chance to express themselves and tell their sides of the story um, of being disabled and what it's actually like when they've not been listened to by a lot of the medical profession. So, um, it, so I do get quite a lot of volunteers, which is nice. And I ask them to send me the photographs and we discuss um, how I like them to be portrayed because I prefer it if people have their hands in the image as well, because I've still got a thing about drawing hands from me, Egon Sheila influences and stuff, because I love him as an artist as well. So, yeah, I just put the word out and then people contact me on Instagram, on Facebook, and we have further discussions as to how they want to be portrayed um, and what their stories is, is and that it's a maximum of 400 words that I want in a, in a story because it's got to be able to fit onto social media, okay? I'm just going to give you a heads up that we've got about six, almost six minutes left. Time goes by fast. And I just wanted to say that I volunteered. I sent Barbara a photograph and uh, she's going to do one of me because I have a disability. And um, so I just wanted you to know that. Uh, so um, let's see what um, we have six minutes left. And uh, Barbara, how did Scar's series and all exhibits go? We've got about six minutes. Right. My Scars and All, um, so I decided to do an exhibition on Facebook. So I um, started publicising it about a month beforehand. I'd got 10 pictures by this time, so I wanted to show them show them all on, on Facebook. And um, 
a guy that I know called Michael Duggan did a flyer for me because he does that professionally. So I was using that on Facebook, putting that out once a week in the month leading up to it. And then in the final week before the exhibition, I created the event on Facebook and um, posted daily the countdown to the um, to the event and then invited everybody and people came along and commented on the pictures and paintings and it was it was great and it was uh, very fulfilling it's had really good feedback from it um barbara how did your exhibit at the most prestigious of art venues go yeah that was a shame because of my agoraphobia i couldn't go there myself so, which I would have loved to, because to be exhibited at Sotheby's is um, something else to say the least. So I was very pleased to be shown that. That was how the painting of Helen Roten that was shown there. Um, it was organized by an organization called Outside In that supports disabled artists. And um, I entered it in and I was chosen. And at first I couldn't believe that they'd chosen me. I was thinking there's been a mistake because it, it was so prestigious. But yeah, I was actually shown there. And um, apparently a lot of celebrities went, I've seen videos of the opening night and there was a lot of celebrities there and a lot of people went to check it out. I would have loved to have been able to go because it, it looks fan looked fantastic. And I've seen um, a virtual tour of the exhibition as well, which was great great to see and lovely to see it in situ but yeah very thrilled to be at Sotheby's <laughs> um uh, Barbara um did, how did um well what part did disability dis disability art online help you Oh, the organisation Disability Arts Online, they were great because it was them that put up about the outside in calling out for um, pictures to be entered for the Humanities exhibition. So, um, and also um, they've promoted all my series of paintings, um, the scars and all, men's health, women's health and mental health. Um, they've done shown all my pictures in their online magazine and done articles about me and um, being very supportive um it, they've been brilliant but uh, and all, all, uh, there's a painting i don't know if it's the next one up which is i think of colin hambrook who's the editor of um of disability arts online yeah that's colin he's the he's the main main editor of um disability arts online and that's watercolor as well but he sent me a very straightforward portrait of him which was just a face shot and this to choose from to do a painting from and I, I thought this was so full of life and energy which turns out after having met him online now is much more him to be so energetic and enthusiastic he's a great guy and very supportive to disabled artists too and last but we have only two minutes and 50 seconds to go. This is a portrait of Osayuki Igbinoba, who I contacted on Instagram because she was posting a petition about um, having to leave her job as a pharmacist because of her disabilities and the NHS not providing, um, which is National Health Service in the UK, not providing disabled toilets for staff um, she was trained to be a pharmacist and having to use the public disabled toilets, which were half um, an hour away from her work base. So she ended up not drinking to try and not drinking any fluids to try and put off going to the toilet and stuff. Um, and then in the end, she had to leave her job, which I thought was a travesty. So I wanted to share her petition and her story. Um, online because I thought it was a story that needed to be told and that people needed to be aware of. Um, this is also watercolour and um, it's got a Klimt influence background on it. Well, we have one minute and 35 seconds to go. <laughs> is there something special that you wanted to say that 
Oh, they also oh. um also disability arts on I did an article on disability arts online um about Osayuki uh, Igbinoba um which also helped publicize the fact of of her not being able to train to be a pharmacist because she was a grade A student. She did really well in her exams and she would have been a great asset to the NHS. So it's a tragedy for herself personally as well as NHS that they didn't provide for her needs. But yeah, she had a petition that went um, to go to Parliament about it, campaigning for disability access in NHS hospitals because it affects um, many patients as well as staff members and it's something that needs sort sorting out um so yeah she's okay. she did her best to we, do that we have 32 seconds so um i uh, i would like to know oops we're getting down to 19 seconds so um I just want to say thank you so much, Barbara, for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It's been great. Um, you're a great host and a fabulous artist yourself as well. Okay. Very, very honored to be here.